Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Mike and Brad Show. We are back by popular demand for the last four years. All anybody asks me and Mike is, when are you bringing the show back? He said popular demand. So the popular demand was basically Tom calling you and saying, hey, you know what? Let's bring Mike and Brad's show back. <laughs> That's the popular demand. One dude. And John Allen. John Allen, John Allen, and hopefully he's watching. He was amazing. Uh, he is our one viewer tonight, no yeah. doubt about it. Uh, we do want to give a shout out to Tom, our man behind the camera, our producer, our Jamie of sorts. And our the popular demand guy. What do you think he's been doing <laughs> for four years that we haven't been on? What's he been doing? Yeah, Tom, what do you think he had to guess? Not shaving his arms, that's for sure. <laughs> guy, dude's heavy, if you've ever seen this guy. Bigfoot takes pictures of him. <laughs> so we get a lot. Look, we get a lot to catch up on. Uh, but first, a big shout out to Brood Awakening. Oh, yes, yes. yes Brood, Brood Awakening. So let, let's use their beautiful um, conference room, sound room, stage room. Everything. I'm not thrilled about the Sam Adams in the back. As you know, I hate Sam, Sam Adams. Sam Adams hates you. It's, but, it's the other way around. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> He makes it sound like he hates, he hates Sam Adams. No, no. They didn't pick you for the Sam Adams commercial because they hate you. You didn't make the cut. That's why. Well, That's why you haven't made all these auditions. We're going to talk about these in probably we are, other. We are. Maybe I, we could talk about it today. I, I hate them because they hate me. <laughs> I hate Sam Adams now for that's, hating me. That's, that's the truth. That is the truth. So yeah. quick recap if anyone doesn't know I auditioned for the your cousin from Boston commercial <laughs> which there's a million variations whoever the guy who got picked is probably so rich right now the guy's awesome by the way too <laughs> makes a great commercial and uh, I'm bitter I've been bitter about it for four years I actually did I tell you I posted a picture I was in Boston for my sister-in-law ran the marathon shout out to Alyssa and there was a big Sam Adams setup, and they were given uh, marath Sam Adams Marathon beer, which is delicious. I took a big picture and I posted, Sam Adams should have picked me. You tagged Sam and Adams? They sent me a message. They said, get over it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> they basically told me to go f myself. <laughs> and like, I was to tell you, which was. I couldn't even get mad. Brad's like, been you know crying. What? How long ago I was it? I deserved that. Four years. He's been crying for four years. <laughs> four years. That's how long it's been. That's where we've been for the past four years before we got drawn back in with pop by popular demand, of course. <laughs> Mike's been consoling we, me for four there, years. Brad, you have to tell the fine people out there that's not the only company no. that hates you. And you. And I would have killed it. Go ahead. All right. So I've been mad for four years that Sam Adams didn't pick me for the Your Cousin from Boston, uh, from Boston ad. Well, a few months ago, history repeated itself. A comedian reached out, hey, Boston, uh, a casting agency in Boston is looking for a guy with a New England accent for a commercial. And I was like, here's my chance of redemption, baby. This is my comeback. Sam Adams, blue, I'm gonna make him pay. It was a ocean spray cranberry juice commercial. Which nobody cares about. I, I, my wallet cares about it. I auditioned. I did, I felt really good about it. I'm like, all right, this, first I did the video audition. They called me into Boston. I'm like, all right, I'm ready this time. I'm not going to hold back. I'm, and we I did the in. audition in his spare room in his house. And I was the voice in the back, like of playing the pop. He of played the, the waitress. Yeah. So I, I go to Boston, bam, I, that goes great. Then I'm like, wow, I think I finally might have a chance. They called me again the next day. Hey, Brad, the director and the producer of the commercial would like to do a Zoom call with you. So now the Sam Adams commercial, when I did it, I did an audition. I got one call back to meet the director. This time, it wasn't this is my third call It wasn't callback. Spielberg. It wasn't Spielberg. No, no, it was Tarantino. <laughs> I, got, I got my third call back. So I did video, uh, Ocean Spray video, I did a live audition in Boston, and then the next day they asked me to do a Zoom audition with the producer and the director, and I felt really good. Like it went, I did. They had me do all these different variations. They, I do it like this: look this way, do this voice, do this, ba ba ba. And if and there was, was going to be a supporting role, I had, I probably would have won the supporting role with my voiceover. And Mike also auditioned. He he didn't get yes. past the video route, but he did look great in the. What do you call? It's not overall waiters. I, they're called waiters. I said, a, you know what, Brad. You should wear waders and a hat. And yeah. guess, wouldn't you know, 
the dude in the commercials wearing waders and a hat. It's very true. He's like a cranberry baga. Is that yeah, what it's a, called? I think a baga. It is a baga. Whatever. Anyways, a few days ago, <laughs> I'm watching a comedy video on YouTube, and what ad comes up? The Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice Baga ad. I knew all the lines, and once again, I have been screwed. I am still broke, and uh, but you know what? If I'm not going to be the voice and face of Sam Adams or Ocean Spray, might as well be on the Mike and Brad show. <laughs> exactly. What's the <laughs> next by <best> popular demand? <laughs> <laughs> this is like a, a very Brady re reunion. <laughs> Exactly like that. With less kids. What's what's the uh, lesbian uh, maid's name Who? on that show? Masha. What, no, Masha's not Masha the lesbian Chan. maid. The, no, oh, maid. that's all oh, the maid. Yeah, isn't she a lesbian? That was um. That was like she was a pioneer. What was her name? If you're watching, please comment the name of the maid. Alice. 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 Too late. You blew your chance. <laughs> so listen. I, that would have been real bad on Jeopardy. I would have been <laughs> real, real long. We would have been on a commercial break and I would have been Alice. <laughs> especially because you didn't say who is Alice. Uh, <laughs> we're going to start. I, I like I'm saying we're going to start the show. We've been blabbing for 15 minutes. We're going to jump into a taste test. Okay. One of the hit segments from the end of the world apocalypse version of the Mike and Brad show is when we did the pan versus traditional pizza of Domino's. Well, because we're backed by popular demand, we want to give the fans what they want. They want to see us eating. They especially want to see Mike eating shit. That, Mike, I love that Mike is wearing our good friend Gary's MMA Gym's logo while he's about to pig out on some fried chicken. <laughs> Shout out to Bolo. My salad shit wasn't clean. <laughs> My salad shit's at the cleanest. <laughs> so what we're gonna do for you, inquiring minds, you would like to know what we prefer, the Popeye's chicken sandwich or the Chick-fil-A. Now the Chick-fil-A I've had many, many, many times, and I know there was a big craze a couple years ago about this one, but I've actually never yeah, had the they, Popeye's they, chicken they went, sandwich. Like mano, mano. And actually, I'm it's a Kentucky mano Fried mano. Chicken. <laughs> huh? Did you just say mano? -y mano? Yeah, that's what it is. It's mano, 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 mano. That's you a, thought it was two fight. men fighting? It's like, We're yeah, not wrestling. It's like fisticuffs. It's, that's mano y mano. Well, that's a deaf speak. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> mano, mano. So when you think when you think about it, it's a man versus man, right? So it's mano, mano. You guys Whatever have been saying it wrong it. all along. <laughs> All right, so we got we have we have Chick Fil A. We cut it in half already to save time on the filming and production. Yeah, since we don't have a cameraman, I'll just bring it to you. So I'm told the shiny, greasy a bun is Popeyes, correct? That's and then correct. the one less grease is the Chick Fil A sandwich. Now, again, I've never have you had the Popeyes one? I've never had it. <laughs> Why are you Why? asking me these questions? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the dumbest thing I've ever asked somebody. The whole thing, life. the whole ride over here, I'm saying to myself, KFC sandwich is better than both these sandwiches. Really? Why are you we like not? the yes. KFC chicken sandwich. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe we can have a pot two of this, you know. Um, I Chick-fil-A is the only fast food I eat. So the standards for me is really high. I already know I love the Chick-fil-A sandwich. But should you want to start with the Chick-fil-A? And then go into the unknown, what for me, unknown. Yeah, we'll start with the Chick-fil-A, Chick which right. you never had the Popeye one? Never. I like it. It's been sitting here for a little while while we've been blabbing about Sam Adams, so it's a little cold. Yep. Good, though. This would pair well with the Sam Adams. Mmm. <laughs> if, if someone would bring us one. Mm. I usually put a little mayo on the Chick-fil-A sandwich. Do you do that or you just eat it as is? The pickles are such a huge part of this equation on the Chick-fil-A sandwich. Very good. All right. We're supposed to take one bite, but we're a couple of fat no, bastards. So we just keep plowing through. That's possible spot. This is, this is uh, the more popular show. Oh, way more. <laughs> Well, so having said that, we're giving away $2 million to the lucky caller. <laughs> <laughs> if, you are, if you are the third lucky call that says, <laughs> that wished us back, back by popular demand, we will give you a brand new, we'll pay off your mortgage and give you $2 million. Oh, that's million the least dollars. we can do. All right, so now we're going to uh, go Right in. away, right away, Popeye, just by looking at it, it's, it's way better. One, grease. 
Greece always wins. Well, Greece, it is a shiny, greasy But bun. look, that chicken, it's bigger, too. It is bigger. Now, look at the shine of the chicken. It's bigger. One totally looks manufactured. Oh, yeah, there, it does look, I'm surprised that Popeye's does look, yeah, more meaty, I guess. Hmm. It's bigger, but... One bite, it, one bite. And it blows Chick Chick Fil A away. The flavor is rich. I think the fla I think I like the flavor of the chicken better on the Chick Fil A. You're boring. That's why. That's why you're skinny. <laughs> this tastes better. You think so? I don't know. That's Maybe. why people like me buy them. So that's. I don't know, man. Wow. I think it might look whiter because it's not fully cooked. <laughs> No, I like the Chick Fil A no, it, chicken better. The difference is the Chick Fil um, the Popeyes is um, fried like it's got batter, it's crunchy. Um, there's more, there's more um, sauce on it. When you get something Chick Fil A, you have to ask extra sauce on, or what are you gonna put your own Chick Fil A sauce on there? Yeah. It's working well. <laughs> so we're at a disagreement. I like the Chick Fil A. I like the taste of the chicken better. Look, the Popeyes has more bells and whistles, all right? It's got a greasier bun. It's bigger. There's a lot going on. But overall flavor, I, I disagree. I like the flavor of the chicken better at Chick-fil-A. So it's torn. The Chick-fil-A, it has a cleaner taste. But, mm. but the oh, Popeyes, oh so the Popeyes is, um, has, like we said, more bells and whistles, a lot more flavor. First bite, boom, it's like boom. Now, if you're driving and you go through a drive through and you plan on eating one, because see, that's what I do. I don't get, <laughs> I don't get a three-piece meal while I'm driving because it's hard to eat a three-piece right. meal while you're driving. Right. But I do go to Kentucky Fried Chicken and get the chicken sandwich. And I use the wrapper to kind of keep that stuff from spilling on me. And here's another fat guy this tip This is the guy who told me he was starting to diet two weeks ago. And here's a fat guy tip for you, and I don't know if anybody does this. It's very good, a very good tip for anybody, especially a comedian. You're on your way to a show, right? Right. You buy a nice coffee, right? Right. What's your biggest fear? Drinking Death. <laughs> <laughs> your biggest fear is that top coming, <laughs> the top coming off or dripping onto your clothes, yeah. and you're only wearing that. So yeah. I have this small hand towel. About this big. I thought you were going to wear a bib. Like, in my one of the no, bibs and I put it over. Up, so it I put it over my lap. So it, it, it like, cause I get hot. Co I don't drink iced coffees, cause I'm a man. I drink hot coffee all year long. So a lot of times, since they got rid of the styrofoam, the the cops you can't be trusted. Even though when it comes down, I'll go like this sometimes, and it will spill out the side and go on my. I wear. But if you get burned, you could sue them. <laughs> That's the so, good point. So I use the um, towel, which also comes in handy for sandwiches. We that was a lot of talk we'll to get to the sandwich spot. Today. Basically, get a bib that curls up like my little niece has, that curls up and it catches the food or coffee. I think Chick-fil-A has a better taste, Popeye's bigger size. That's my thing. And um, we got to move on. You Look, can't, we, yeah, you can't, miss, you can't miss on either one of them. I think it's, they're both good, but I like the flavor better at Chick-fil-A. And I like Popeye's. I'm so, going to give Chick-fil-A. So it's split down the middle. I'm going with Popeye's. You're going with Chick-fil-A. All right, Tom would like us to rate them. So I'm going to give Chick-fil-A a 9 out of 10. I'm going to give Popeye's a 6 out of 10. It wasn't that bad. Come on. Six seven, out of 10 fine, is like. 7. I'm not going any higher. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Chick-fil-A an uh, uh, um, 8. Okay. And uh, Popeye's a nine. Whoa, baby. And Kentucky Fried Chicken, which had no show in there, a ten. Plus. Next week, next week we're doing that. <laughs> For something about Kentucky Fried Chicken, the flavor of their chicken to me, it's almost good, but it almost tastes toxic. Like, it tastes like almost like it's poison. I don't know how to explain it. We're going to move on. We have a lot to talk about. This, All is, right? this, is, why, this is why Sam Adams hates them. Well, right. This is why exactly why. It's not because I have no talent. All right, let's move on to the next Move subject. on. We're, we're in the summer. You, and, Welcome uh, to summer, It was a everybody. nice day, so I took the doors off my Jeep. I checked my weather app three times to make sure it's not going to rain before I drive around with no doors on. And we arrived here at Brood Awakening Studios, and it's pouring rain now, and my seats are soaked. 
but you, Mike, said you had some tips to share with our viewers for the summer. Summer tips, you said. Oh, no. I, I, I just said, let's talk about summer. Summer and offer tips. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Which, which we don't have tip. any. <laughs> We don't offer you tips. We're gonna pick. tips on how to enjoy this summer as a poor man. <laughs> tip one: Don't take the doors off if it's gonna be pouring rain. That's tip number one. <laughs> tip number one: Don't open your windows. This is not when we were growing up. There was we didn't have air conditioning and everything. I grew you, up. You had the roll, the crank roll up. Windows. No, I mean in the house. Oh. So, so you, you, they're supposed to keep the shades down and the window shut so the heat doesn't get in and stay ahead of it that way. And then we so... So you guys to, just sat at a dark house, windows closed, no lights on, nude. Sounds, just trying sound, to stay cool. It, I know it sounds like a, a hostage situation. <laughs> it's a hell of an upbringing. But, but we were cool, damn it. <laughs> my, my parents, we didn't have AC for a while either. We had this big fan, like this big metal I don't think anyone ever cleaned it. It would just blow hot dust at your face. <laughs> it it's looked like, like an old It was a sweatshop. <laughs> it was so bad. And it was loud. So you'd have the TV on, everyone's sweating, and tube TV. It was one of those fans with no be protection for hands either. <laughs> it would just go, like, it'd be like, <laughs> and, hot, and it, it's no cool air, so it's just blowing hot dust. It wasn't again. a fan, it was a propeller. <laughs> I picked it up in a scrapyard. So far, we can make this work. I think probably, my parents probably still have that fan, hundred percent. So we've given you two summer tips: keep the doors on if it's raining, and buy AC for your house. That's what we've. And played. a six pack of Sam Adams. Yes. You no. Know, here's another reason I'm mad at Sam Adams. I had uh, Sam Summer, which I do like the flavor, is very heavy and acidic. So when you go to Fenway and it's summer, which I did last week, and you have an insane amount of Sam Summer uh, beer, what happens is you get pretty sick. I felt awful. I get pretty, I get pretty screwed up on Sam Adams Summer beer. No, I'm off Sam Adams Summer for the rest of the summer. So what's your, is this your favorite season, Mike? As a fat guy, I would assume you wouldn't choose summer. What's no, your favorite no, season? No, no, so fat people don't like summer because yeah. they're sweating. Yeah, what's so your favorite? I, I, like, I like the spring and I like the fall. How about your favorite holiday? My favorite holiday? Now, remember, now, last week we were doing a show together on the comedy bus, and I asked a guy up front his favorite holiday. I said, let me guess, Thanksgiving, because he was a lodge fellow. Oh! And he was not happy about that. He, he was did. not happy. <laughs> but, and that happened like in the very beginning, the guy was sitting right in front. And he was a heavy guy. He's a pretty big dude. He was like twice the size of me. Twice the width of mine. And yes. um, he's he's like, he's like, I get it. I'm a fat guy. Um, yeah, move on, move on. That was yeah. He goes, oh, real pretty, original. Really original. Really original. Yeah. He was and I'm like, happy. then then all of a sudden, like Brad's like backpedaling. <laughs> I was trying Brad's to win like, him. Over. Brad's like this in his car, like. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, I made a joke about somebody in the, the back. The whole bus ride, he was trying to get back I into the guy's back. good graces. I don't want that guy to squish me, man. He looked like a strong guy. I was making fun of someone in the back, and I heard a laugh over here. Like, oh, good, the fat guy's laughing. And I look, and it wasn't. It was the guy behind him. Like, yeah. shit, I thought yeah. I got him on my side. He enjoyed my set because I didn't because I, I didn't pick on him. And because you looked like him. He's like, I, I was like, I don't know. Look. Fat shaman works. Maybe he's on treadmill right now. You're welcome. You know what I mean? We, that's why I try to give you shit so you can get healthy and live. You gotta stop eating these yeah, sandwiches. He, he, he's over here talking about, I've been trying my hardest to get Mike to eat healthy. But let's Tarantino this and go back two hours. <laughs> Mike, swing by Popeyes. We're doing a taste test on a chicken sandwich and Chick fil A. Next week, we're each eat an entire <laughs> pie. <laughs> we're going to test out some pies. All right, so we're going to move on to the sports section of today's Mike and Brad show. Um, not too much exciting going on sports because already the excitement happened, which is the big win for the, uh, the Boston Celtics. I even got a, a huge Celtics tattoo on my arm because I think I'm 18 years old. Uh, and I want to be cool. It turns out tattooing your elbow hurts really, really, really bad. I don't recommend it. He's been crying about it since. <laughs> Literally crying about it since. 
But my He's got a blog. I'm in pain. That's the name <laughs> of the blog. I'm in pain. And then the byline is, don't get an elbow tattoo by Brad Pitt. And my suits are wet <laughs> from taking the doors off. What I... You just said now the Celtics, are, someone, the Boston Celtics are up for sale. They're, so, that they're up me. for sale, so I'm thinking mm-hmm. you, me, buy them? you and Tom buy, them? buy the Boston Celtics. So if we buy the Boston Celtics, can we change the name? Like What, I, what would we name it? The Johnston Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, the picture, of a, it's Celtics. a picture of a landfill on the front of the jerseys. Yeah, uh, yeah. okay. So... If anyone's looking, you know, for an early Christmas gift or maybe a birthday coming up, you can buy one of your loved ones, the Boston Celtics. They're up for sale. How what much a present that would for? be. Let's ask our guy. Not to uh, open in that Tom, card. How you much? open that card. You make believe you're reading the card, <laughs> but it's just a it's just a coupon. You now own the Boston Celtics, <laughs> but it's on the it's on the floor because you didn't want to disrespect the person, your grandmother, for giving you the card. So you got to read it to a wonderful grandson. <laughs> you're the best. You bring smiles to my faces, and then all along the keys to the Boston Boy, Celtics are the on boss. the floor. My grandmother never bought me an NBA team. Not once. What would be the first thing that you do? To change up this Boston Celtics, or would you leave it alone? I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. They're pretty damn awesome. They're the most exciting New England team going. They don't right have now. cheerleaders. They have cheerleaders. Do what they have cheerleaders? About? Yeah, they I have cheerleaders. I don't think so. They never show them on 100% TV. A hundred percent, they have cheerleaders. Dancers, I think they call them. Oh, our, our producer has informed us and corrected us. They're called dancers. Look, it's hot chicks moving around. What's the difference? I say tomato, you say tomato. How about a mascot? And sometimes they put a dude in there for fans like my grandfather who want to enjoy it. My grandfather was gay. Uh, but they have some <laughs> That's dancing. That's another dudes. show, That's guys. That's a whole other show altogether. <laughs> Ah, that's easy. Four point seven billion. That's less than five, dude. Hey, do they take Venmo? <laughs> Cash out. <laughs> How about Zell? I want to give them fifty percent in Zell. Now, here's the thing. I'm not like a big hey, like. Pal. I'm not like a big. I wish I was super rich guy. I mean, I would like to have that Sam Adams or cranberry juice money, but. I'm not like a big like, because money, having a lot of money scares me. Like, I don't want to win the lottery. It scares me. But it would be funny, like, to have the amount of money of, like, a uh, Elon Musk. He could literally buy the Celtics for his friend for his birthday. Like, like it was a coffee. Yeah. He could be like, oh, uh, oh, oh we're going to birthday this weekend. And he's like, oh, I and his feel son's, like And his shopping. son's name's like nine or something like that, right? <laughs> he's got like a crazy number yeah. name, right? One of his sons has like a super name, like a print, so almost like a symbol. Yeah. So it's like, hey, nine, check this out. Happy birthday. Not even happy birthday. Any day. It'll be like Tuesday. Good morning, son. Guess what we're going to do today? Yeah. You, oh, you, you cleaned your room? <laughs> you, cleaned you can have the Boston Celtics. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Remember the other day, son, that you were telling me, hey, what's that sport with the ball? And they try to get in and I told you <laughs> basketball. You are now the proud now owner of the Boston Celtics. You got a B plus on your report card. Enjoy the Celtics, <laughs> little buddy. You ate all your vegetables last night. The Boston Celtics are yours. <laughs> now, now moving into a way less impressive spot. Uh, currently, Mike, you probably don't realize this because you're American. Uh, the Copa America and the Euro Cup are playing soccer right now. I know this because my wife is Portuguese. That's the only reason I know any of this shit. So I've been watching a little bit. They Your family must be at war. Oh, they, everyone, so, like, you know, no, everyone, they all ex- they get excited. Yeah. You know? My father-in-law doesn't speak a word of English. He watches soccer all day, every day. I don't even know how this game's going on. Every yeah. season there's a game somewhere. But anyways, this is like a big deal. So I've been watching a little bit of it. And it makes no sense. First of all, have you you know the how the field's time, way too big. Way too big. It should be short. You know how the time works too. Like instead of like it's backwards. I instead think instead of going out of bounds, and they like stop the clock, or if there's a penalty, you know in basketball, oh foul, stop the clock. They keep the clock running, so that at the end of the game, you don't know when you're in. So if it's a tie game, and you're like, oh who's gonna win? Oh they better score quick. You have no idea how much time is left. Because it'll be 90 minutes, but there's all this bonus time from when they let the clock run 
Am I making sense? You don't know what I'm no, saying. No, no. The clock never stops. Tom, you don't have to. Yeah, it never stops. It just never stops. So the, you do know when it's. No, so, but you don't know when it's. Oh, end. so let's say for the sake of conversation, I'm up one or nothing. Yep. I can kick that ball out of bounds on purpose. No. No. Because I when can you stop kick it and out go of, get a hot dog. This is how weird <laughs> soccer is. I can't even explain it to this dude because it makes no sense. It's so stupid. Just stop the damn clock. Just oh oh, it went out of bounds. Stop the clock. How hot and is that? Every other back sport in, has that. No, up what again. they do is you kick the ball out of bounds. The clock keeps running. But those twenty seconds it was out of bounds. They add that at the end of the game. Oh. So so you know how like you get a snow day in school. I know it's been forty years since you went to school. But you know when you're in school, there was a snow day. Yeah. And they add that snow day. And at you the go end, to school. And August. you get screwed in the summer. It's like that with the the soccer. So but you don't know how much time. So they'd be like surprise. There's no oh, more they minutes. surprise you at the yes. end. Yes. Yes. It's so stupid. Oh, that's nuts. And then here's another dumb thing. Hockey. That's like getting a gift of the Boston Celtics for. <laughs> <laughs> So now here's, here's another stupid rule. If you get a really bad penalty, like uh, it's called a red card. So if you slap somebody in the face, like America, I was watching America, rooting for our guys, even though, oh, let's all yeah. face it, we're America, we're gonna lose, they're playing tonight. He hits the guy in the head. Red card, you're out. So you're thinking hockey, right? If you do it with his, your hands, not against rules. If you kick him in the head, is that, cool? is that legal? Totally fine, spin kick him right in the face, <laughs> Van Damme style. So this dude gets ejected. You've seen a basketball game or a football game, a guy gets ejected, right? But they get a couple warning cards, so yellow well, they cards. Well, the, they do the warning cards, but what I'm saying is when you get the red card and you get ejected, like in hockey, you play a man down for two minutes, a power yeah. play, right? Or in other sports, if he gets ejected, he gets it. In soccer, you play the man down the rest of the game. No way. So this That's guy, not fair. It's bullshit. So, this so they guy, have so they have people instigate to try to get him to create this probably. play with foul? So so this American Like guy, I mean get in front of him and go, come on, what do you want to do? What do you, you want to hit me? You wanna hit me? You wanna punch me? You wanna punch me? You wanna punch me, don't you? I mean, that's you wanna the punch strategy. me? Huh? 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 Sam Adams! Sam Adams! <laughs> when I lose my cup, I slap you. I'm out. So now we're playing Panama early in the game. This American slaps a dude in the head. He's out. Now, U.S. had to play a man down the whole game. So, so shocking, power he, play the rest of the, the time. The rest of the game. That's the stupidest rule I ever heard. So, soccer is so stupid. That's like sending in a dog to kick a field goal. <laughs> Those <laughs> movies, don't get me started on those movies. <laughs> Like super there, pop there was, a, there was a few years, sport. not to get off track, but there was a bunch of years where every movie was a dog kicking field goals or something. It was like, and, it was like, and they put a helmet on him and everything. Yeah, it was like, like super pop, and he's got like a cape, yes. and he talks and shit. Yeah, bud. Yeah, slamming, bud. Slamming basketballs. Come on, man. It, it was bad enough for Michael J. Fox was a werewolf playing basketball. <laughs> then you now, had, hey, then you told him to table off the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, the movie Tom, Tom, Tom lives his life as Team Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> He's so hairy. Look at him. <laughs> He's never gone back. <laughs> He's a cross between Wolverine and <laughs> Michael J. Fox. <laughs> All right. So speaking, so since you took us to the, the uh, subject of movies and movies that are annoying, I personally, uh, I don't know why it irritates me, but have you seen the trailer for Twisters? Like, like, like hurricanes? Yes. No, uh, tornadoes. I only watch them if there's sharks in them. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Sharknado was awesome. All, all 20 of them. Oh, yeah, I, don't, I didn't see all of them. I'm not that big of a fan. But I've seen probably three of them. But here's... <laughs> That's a lot of life. Here's... Yeah, right? Well spent. I... Have you, speaking of well spent, he's... he's Sharknado. He only saw it three times. Last night, he was proud and pressing me to watch Game of Death or no, whatever. No, movie. no, no. No, don't misrepresent this <laughs> classic. Won, I think, seven Academy Awards. The movie's called Mocked for Death, starring Steven Seagal, <laughs> where he fights Jamaican Rastafari I guys. literally had to say, Brad, go away. I'm, tr I'm trying to sleep. I'm like, you're gonna watch Mock no, for Death. No, really, put Mock for Death on. He'll be, and then he's sending me all these Steven Seagal emojis. <laughs> I'm like, dude, 
Did I not just put go away? You know, <laughs> tell me that there's a comedian on earth as funny as Steven Seagal. He's Zero. The, best. the funniest man alive. Okay, if, you, if you ever get a chance, go on YouTube and watch the, the clips of him like the doing best. the martial arts. He's the giant now. Cause, but in his movies, he was in good shape. Yeah, kinda. Kinda. But <laughs> now he's like, he's twice, three times oh, the size of me. Huge. He's like the guy on the bus. He's like the guy on the bus <laughs> <laughs> with a better attitude. <laughs> I don't think Cigar would just, he would have just like. <laughs> he would have broke my wrist and threw me through the window. <laughs> Mark for death. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor yeah. and check it out. Uh, okay, so Twisted, the original Twister was back. Who was the boring blonde chick in that movie? Helen Hunt or something? Helen Hunt? So am I? No, no, I'm talking about the original. The original. You ever seen the movie Twister about the 20s? It was from like the early 90s, I think. I never saw it because it. I don't. I hate the natural disaster movies. I I, I feel the way you feel about dogs playing basketball about the net. And especially with the tornado. So now there's a new one coming huh. out called Twisters, where they they hunt tornadoes. Oh, or that, oh yeah, they're, some, they're called show? some chases. Yeah, I don't understand. What are we rooting for in the movie? Like, so they they're gonna drive up to a tornado. Oh, they want to be in the eye of the yeah, storm. These people. To these people, what? they do this for a living, dude. For what? What are you hoping to accomplish when you yeah, get Yeah, car like kind of gets twisted around. <laughs> you hope your car gets. It's all, it's, it's all about the likes. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> clickbait. <laughs> it's I, don't, I don't look at how it's your car get sucked up like the Wizard of Oz. You get a lot of clicks. I don't remember Helen Hunt shooting selfies during Twister. In the I, Danny, uh, what I'm is surprised I haven't heard Helen Hunt's name in the longest that time. That was the original. Well, maybe she has now a cameo in this as a real old person. I don't understand what the point is. You oh, chase the tornado. Chase. They report on it. They want to get there. They want to they see debris spinning around. It, it's exciting for them. There's a scene where Helen Hunt and whoever the dude was, I was trying to watch the original yeah. to see what the appeal is. Mike keeps, you keep asking Mike what's the point of the movie, but Mike keep, Mike keep answering him is like, what's the point of that job? He's which saying in real life. Yeah, which like still solidifies your point of what's the point Yeah, the, of the real, movie? yeah, he, Mike, Tom is right. Whether it's the movie yeah. or these guys in real life, I don't, I don't get it. It That's doesn't it, make any yeah. sense That's to me. That's their life, man. So, they're like ghost scene. hunters, but they, it's a tornado. It's a real thing. I mean, like, are you, I feel like if you're going it's, to watch it's, that movie. It's not a tornado going, ooh. <laughs> I would prefer that. It's a, a tornado, ooh. So if a tornado moves this cabinet door and this chair, it's a tornado ghost. <laughs> no, ghost NATO. Ghost be, I would watch that all day. I would watch Instead that. Instead of buying the Celtics, let's put that movie out. If I'm going to see the movie Twisters, I'm rooting for it. He would audition Tony. for a pop in his own movie and not get it. I would not know. <laughs> no, Tom, Tom would be the director. He's like, we're, looking, we're going in a different direction. I'll be the producer. It will be the open auditions. Brad comes in. Nah, we'll call you. <laughs> we'll call you. <laughs> but it's my movie. <laughs> Next. And then I, it, <laughs> I'm saying... I guess the appeal is you root for the tornado, right? Hmm? I mean, don't you kind of root for the tornado? Because in Jaws, it's not like they're going and swimming after it's the It's like shot. NASCAR. You're rooting for a, a crash, yes. When you're watching Twisters, you're watching it stuff live, you want to see the dude that's chasing it get messed up. You definitely okay. want that. That's the objective. I so, guess. of course, you've got to watch. But, uh, but it's a movie. You know the end and everything. So I, I don't know the end. I what, suggest... You beat the, at the end, the good guys beat the tornado. They kill the tornado. Well, next what time, happens at the end? There's sites where you can watch live streaming. Right now, right now, somewhere in Oklahoma, there's a twister going on. Mm -hmm. And you've got six hillbillies <laughs> in the Subaru pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> Out, heading towards that tornado, right? Drinking Sam Adams and cranberry juice, <laughs> right? And you just and you can literally watch that and then hope, and hope then like they, they all get, they get sucked yeah, up they, into the sky. It gets really dark. It gets really, That's really loud. I, I think mean, there was one just outside, which is why my jeep gets soaked. All right, look, go see Twisters if you'd like to. I don't get it. <laughs> I'm looking at his list a little over here of topics. Yeah, I, everything's spontaneous look to how me. I don't know. This show is. When, I, when I showed Twisters, I saw it real fast and I saw Twizzlers. <laughs> I might get excited. And I got excited. 
I did get excited. That's the only reason you showed up. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, there's going to be Twizzlers? I'll be there. Call Tom. Listen, we got to go. How much Thank time do we have? We've been on for six hours. Thanks for tuning in for the first episode of Mike and Brad show in the new world. We're open. The new world. We're in the new world. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I think we should name it something like, you know, how like to have the, um, what were those? Pop shows back like Saved by the Bell. The yes, new, the new yes. class. Remember the new the, class. Yeah, the new class. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike's gonna be dead. We by need the end swag of this. and everything. I never watched any of those shows. Look, Mike and Brad take on the world. Mike and Brad, do, how about do the? You see, Beavis and Butthead do the universe. That was so funny. Call, uh, Mike and Brad Call of Duty Part <laughs> Two. <laughs> Look, we're gonna go home. We're gonna watch some soccer and some tornadoes. Thanks for tuning in to the Mike and Brad show. We're going to be doing this weekly, John, just for John Allen, essentially. Thanks for being here. Any final words, Mike? Um, no, thank you. Um, it, it's been, um, you know, I can't wait till we um, plan our last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, America. And cut. And I was trying to see Bill and Ted. Cut. <laughs>